I think you're gonna ask me things. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's the press conference. Usually nobody says anything, so feel free to ask questions. I mean, that's what we're here for. What is it? What is it? Well, what do you want to know? I mean, specifically, it was its clothes. <laughs> what is the relationship with the music? Sorry? What is the relationship of your collection with your music? With my music? Yes. Um, <clears throat> I don't think there's a relation with the music, but um, I think that from a creative point of view, I think you're, I'm personally always looking for different areas to be creative because pop music now is not a creative industry anymore. You know, it's a manufactured premeditated, everything is the same now. I mean, when I started in music, it was a place where you could really be challenging and, you know, it was a great experience, but I don't think you have that anymore in music. So, from a creative point of view, you're always looking for other ways to, to say what you want to say, you know, to, to express your perversity or whatever it is onto, onto the humanity, which is what I try to do. So, yeah, that's why I'm... And also, I started, uh, before I started Culture Club, I had a shop. So I, for me, I've gone full circle. I had a shop in Carnaby Street called The Foundry, which is where all the original clothes from Culture Club came from. We used to make those clothes, and then I became a musician. And so I've gone full circle. In a way, I've gone back to the beginning. <clears throat> and everything's organic. I don't have any backers. I'm not a celebrity designer with lots of money. Everything is done by myself, which is why I'm such a terrible businessman. Um, you know, it's really about the ideas for me. This isn't some, you know, you cynical, oh, I'm gonna make loads of money. It's, I haven't made any money out of it <laughs> since I started it, but it's, it's another wonderful avenue to express yourself. And um, the one, I mean, you know, in fashion, there's a lot of snobbery, you know, like, like in music, like in all, all creative industries. But the great thing about fashion, there are always pockets of resistance. There's always somebody who wants something ridiculous to wear. Wherever you go in the world, you know, there's always somebody, there's always a market for unusual things. And so you have freedom in fashion that you don't have in pop music, you know, because now, as I say, you know, everything in pop music is, you know, people don't, they don't admire you for being unusual, they admire you for being the same. You know, oh, you sound like this. Sorry, I'm really talking too much, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Δεν υπάρχει σχέση, να το πω, με τη μουσική του. Απλά έχει πάρει κάποιες ε, ιδέες. Ε, όλα έγιναν ε, από αυτόν. Ε, αυτός είναι ο κύριος ε, δημιουργός ε, της όλης ε, ιδέας αυτής. Ε, είναι ένας τρόπος ε, για να εκφράσει τον εαυτό του. Ε, και πιστεύω ότι πάντα υπάρχει κάποιος που θέλει να φοράει κάτι ιδιαίτερο και μέσα από αυτή τη σειρά σίγουρα θα βρει κάτι. That was an abbreviated version of words. <laughs> Probably a lot more sensible as well. <coughs> okay. Yeah. Speak to me. <laughs> Was this a, is the world of fashion or the world of music? What's worse or what's better? None of it's easy. I mean, you know, it's. Uh, I don't think you, I don't, I don't think, from my point of view, I don't think about whether it's easy, you know, life is not easy, you look like me. <laughs> I mean, I've, my life has never been easy, you know, I've grown up as an outsider, from the age of six years old I was being called Pushti, you know, so, <laughs> to me, why would, why would I even think about life being easy, it's just not even a question I even consider, no, that's not what I'm looking for, easy, okay, maybe when I'm 60. Ακόμα και η ίδια ζωή δεν είναι εύκολη. Ακόμα η ηλικία. The easy life is not something I'm aware of. Είναι κατάλληλη ώρα για να μεταφράσουμε τα πάντα σε αυτό. That was easy. I mean, I think, you know, as I say, it's really just about ideas. I mean, that's the thing that stimulates me. You know, I love being able to express myself. And when, some, when one area becomes difficult to express myself, then I look for some other area to express myself, you know. That doesn't mean that there's insincerity in what I do. It just means that 
I'm one of these people that multitasks, I do lots of things. And when, you know, it's interesting because, you know, when I landed last night, I was interviewed and there was like, you used to be a singer, now you're a designer. Well, I'm not my job, you know. It's like you have to become your job to have some kind of credibility. Um, I just see myself as a creative person, you know, and uh, whatever I've done in my life, you know, when I first made music, the things people wrote about me was so horrible. <laughs> I was like, they hate me. It just seems to be a thing, you know, in life, there are people that love you and understand what you do, and there are people that just, you know, don't understand you, and I don't care about those people. You know, I'm too old <laughs> to care anymore. Είναι πάλι έτσι μια ιδέα για το να εκφράσει τον εαυτό μου. Ε, πρέπει πάντα σε αυτό που κάνει να δει το 100% ε, στη δουλειά σου για να έχει μια ταυτότητα συγκεκριμένη. Συγκεκριμένα στη μουσική, πάλι όταν πρώτα είχα ξεκινήσει, υπήρχαν άνθρωποι που με μισούσαν, γι' αυτό υπήρχαν άνθρωποι που αγαπούσαν αυτό που έκανα. Ε, έτσι και σε αυτό που κάνω τώρα. I think that, sorry, I was thinking music and fashion, anything creative, it's about the moment. So the important thing is what happens when we do the show, that's it. This, you know, talking about it, it's like talking about sex. You know, it's much better just to do it, you know. <laughs> and it's a funny thing, you know, it's like, can you talk about music? It's like, how does it affect other people, you know? And whether it affects people in a good way or a bad way is not important to me. It's the fact that it, it creates a reaction, you know, the, and that says, I think how you feel about what I do says more about you than it does about me, because you can never understand what I'm trying to say. You know, and I've spent my whole life hearing, oh, that's what I was feeling, or that's what I was thinking, oh, that's what I'm trying to do, and it's never right, you know, so for me, the most important thing is, you know, like this afternoon, the fittings, the models, do they look good in the clothes? Do they feel good? Is it sexy? That's what I want to do, you know, I want to make people excited. <laughs> Hello? It's <laughs> more <laughs> Do you think that uh, Greek people are someone that would be your clients? Yes. There's a few in the front row. There's I think. Already one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think that you know, there are, as I say, you know, there are all over the world. There are the thing about the thing about clothing is it, it's, it's a language. You know, it's a it's a dialect. You know, some people use clothing to say, you know, I fit in, I belong. You know, I'm like everybody else. Most people who buy expensive fashion are just trying to say how rich they are. You know, they buy a 600 pound handbag, and all they're trying to say is, look at how, what I can afford. Um, then there are people like me who use clothing to, to, you know, make people aware that I don't really belong. Although I do really, but you know, this idea of being an outsider. So there's so many, so many things you can do with clothing. You know, it, it is a language. You know. Κάποια πιστεύω ότι γενικώς το να φοράς κάποια ρούχα δείχνουν το ότι είναι αυτό το τάσο. Υπάρχουν βέβαια και άνθρωποι που το κάνουν αυτό απλά για να δείξουν το πόσο πλούσιοι είναι αγοράζοντας ακριβά ρούχα, αλλά η δικιά του άποψη είναι ότι φοράω αυτά ε, για να δείξω αυτό που είμαι. And also, you know, the people that are the most disparaging about fashion are the ones that are the most obsessed about it. You know, it's like atheists are obsessed with God, you know, because all they do is think about it. <laughs> Η ερώτηση της δημοσιογράφου ήταν αν, έχει, αν πιστεύει ότι θα υπάρξουν πελάτες στην Ελλάδα και ήδη είχαμε την πρώτη δήλωση του τόλου του Σκουλαριώτη, ο οποίος δηλώνει πελάτης. Ε, θέλω να προσθέσω στη μετάφραση κάποια πράγματα. I'm trying to add things you said. I'm trying to add things you said that the guy couldn't keep up with. I'm sorry, I'm too too fast. Ο Boy George στην πραγματικότητα είναι σαν να ξαναξεκινάει από την αρχή αυτή τη στιγμή. Γιατί έγινε γνωστό ω τραγουδιστή, αλλά στην πραγματικότητα πριν, 4-5 χρόνια πριν, στην Carnaby Street, είχε το δικό του κατάστημα που λεγόταν Foundry. Εκεί έφτιαχνε ρούχα και από αυτά τα ρούχα έγινε στα clubs και έγινε πάρα πολύ γνωστό. Ε, και όπω και οι περισσότεροι του φίλοι έχουν γίνει πάρα πολύ γνωστοί από εκεί πέρα, και του δόθηκε ευκαιρία να έχει ένα συμβόλαιο για να τραγουδάει. Και έτσι έγινε τραγουδιστή. Και τώρα που έκανε όλο αυτό τον κύκλο, μετά από τραγουδιστή, μετά έγινε producer, DJ, τώρα ξαναγυρνάει πάλι από την αρχή. Είναι ένα κύκλο. Ο άνθρωπο είναι creative. Δεν του αρέσει όταν ε, ε, το ρωτάνε, α πούμε, είσαι τραγουδιστή, είσαι DJ, είσαι σχεδιαστή. Όχι. Ο άνθρωπο είναι απλά creative. Θέλει να κάνει πράγματα. 
Και αυτό που δεν του αρέσει στη μόδα είναι όταν κάποιο βγαίνει με 600 ευρώ τσάντα, προχωράει έξω και λέει ότι κοίτα με, εγώ μπορώ να την αποκτήσω. Δεν κάνει ρούχα για αυτού του ανθρώπου. Κάνει ρούχα για creative ανθρώπου, για ανθρώπου με ιδέε και. Αυτά. Χρειάζεται ο Βότζο να χειροκρότημα από όλου όμω. Αυτή τη στιγμή θα ήθελα να ευχαριστήσω τον Boy George και να απευθύνω το λόγο στη γνωστή σε όλη μας ελληνίδα σχεδιάστρια, Έλενα Βορέα.